Okay, welcome to the Norwich City Home for Everyone campaign. As you can see, the, one of the walls inside Carrow Road has been graffitied with some derogatory terms. My guests I've got here today is Tim, so we've got Kenny, and we've got Megan, who's from the Norwich City Ladies as well. So first of all, we're just going to talk a little bit about these words on the wall, what they mean to you, and how derogatory they are, because I come from an era where I think I've been called 99% of these at quite a few football clubs I've been to, but I never really kind of found them offensive but for everybody's different. So, so Tim, just give us your experiences of it. You, you're, you're a big yeah. fan of Norwich City. You, yep. you know, you've talked about your, 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 your sexuality in the past. And, and yep. So a lot of these are really offensive to you, I presume. Yeah, it's really interesting because when I look at the words on the board, um, for me, they're not words that I've heard personally a lot, but they are the reasons why I have difficulties in my life. So they're the reasons why I don't hold my husband's hand. Uh, they're the reasons why I'm not overly out with my sexuality when I start a new job, when I go into a workplace. It's not, uh, it's more the fear of those words and the rejection that those words represent than it is necessarily hearing those words than my, myself. Yeah. And Kenny, in a football environment, we're not fearful of hearing these words at all. It's kind of, when you come through the process as a youngster, you kind of have to learn to deal with being called these types of things on the football field and, and then around it, and it becomes acceptable almost, isn't it? You, you've presumably heard quite a lot of these in the change rooms on the field as well. Yeah, you, you hear them and it becomes a bit not normal because it's never going to be normal, but you, you don't take offence to a lot of them. I mean, some, some of them up there, you say you've been called most of them and, I, and I'm the same and you don't take it, you know, too personally. And people use them as throwaway comments, which, which is wrong, obviously, but as, as you say, in this, in this line of work, they're used all too often and, you know, it's something needs to change at some point. Meg, like, just tell us your, your experiences because... If you look at male culture football and female culture football, it's almost homosexuality is almost accepted more in the female game, isn't it? And, and that, do you find you, there's as many words like this being used? Um, yeah, so the female game, obviously, it's quite common. There's a lot of different sexualities, but I think that's quite, it's weird, because that's quite the, the norm for us. So it's weird that obviously on the men's side of the game, it hasn't kind of, like, you know, Jake Daniels hasn't really come out. But the one that does make me laugh is you kick like a girl, because... Mm -hmm. I feel like if you see some of the, the women's players kick now, um, yeah, I think that's old school. But it is quite weird, like, seeing all these words, because I think we've all heard it, especially at games. Yeah, that's what I say, is people use them as a throwaway comment, which, which is wrong, because there's people that are affected in so many different ways, and because it doesn't affect us, doesn't mean it doesn't affect other people in different ways. So that's why it needs to get stamped out more, because if, if even I'm saying, you know, they're used as a throwaway comment, then other people or just continue to use them because that's the way they feel like them and it doesn't affect them the way that it affects other people. And I think that's the thing, Kenny, to be honest. It's, it might not affect you, it might not affect your mates and that kind of thing, but you don't know who's listening yeah. and you don't know who's around you and you don't know the effect that it has on them. So I completely get, yeah, it does, you have banter and of course you do. Uh, but sometimes it's about thinking about who else is around. So how, how Kenny, in your opinion, how do, you, how do you stop that happening? Is it just a personal thing and hope everybody buys into it? Is it, is it still a culture that, within the club? Yeah, I mean, it will be throughout football, throughout life. You know, these words will get used, you know, on a daily basis, on a number of, you know, not just football, right across the board. And I don't think it's something you can just say that's it done. It will take time and it will take people to stand up and speak. You know, if you hear it, say something and maybe, maybe the next time somebody will think twice about saying it. Because even though it's not affecting me, if I say to somebody, like, you can't use that or don't use it, the next time they're in my company, they won't use it. So that can just be a domino effect with everybody. And maybe in time, and hopefully it can, kind of get cut out. Yeah. And is that a culture maybe they're trying to kick out of the women's game as well? Is, is it frowned upon within the women's game or is it still accepted? It, it can be different backgrounds. Um, I think, you know, I have heard the words used a lot, dyke and gay and lesbian, like throwing away comments at people and at girls and changing them. I think... Like I said, you don't know how much it affects different people. Like there's some, you know, some girls, especially younger girls who may not have come out yet and don't feel comfortable because they don't want to get those labels uh, where um, in that environment with others. And I think, yeah, like, I think it's just educating people, especially the young generation. Like when I was younger in high school, I had most of these words in high school. Uh, I played for a boys football team. I had a lot of throwaway comments and... I think I was banned from playing for a football final once because I was a girl. So, yeah, it's, it's educating and just making you know, them feel a bit more well, especially the younger generation. I think that's where they're still struggling. Yeah. I mean, do any of these become acceptable? Because I, I look at half of these and I think that one's not too bad. 
is it almost a generational thing where you've got to be looking at those, those younger people coming through the game and through society and to teach them a, a better way of using different words? Yeah, definitely, because like I said, like in, in high school, that would just be like, oh, that, that's so gay. Why, why are you doing that? That's gay. And then it be, it's sometimes I've been guilty of it and you just act, you say it, but you don't mean it to offend anyone, but actually you realise the impact it has on others around. But I do, I do think it's changed, because I mean, if I, if I think about when I was growing up, a lot of those I'd throw around to my mates as well, yeah. because, because that's it was socially yeah. acceptable. And, okay. I st and I probably still would, if I'm honest. Um, but it's about being aware that things are changing and not being close to it. It's not about getting it right all the time. Um, it's, I think it's just about being aware that the world does move on and you do have to think about things a bit differently and do your best to do it. But, but how do you do that? Is it, is it an educational thing towards young people? Because it, it, you clearly, it, it can be, it's so difficult to go out in front of 30,000 people at Cow Road and not expect anyone to get any abuse, isn't it? So it has to start, it's got to start by us as, as players and, and people around the community setting the standards, but also people who are inside the stadium have got to take responsibility as well, haven't they? In their family, in their family environment, because that's where it all comes from. You can't stop what people talk about at home. No, and you know, it's okay speaking about like us in the changing rooms and you know, noticing people saying it, but the, the, the one um, out there this season was where if you see the, the rent boy one here and again, it get, it get laughed upon, even in the change room, you know, it was joked about a wee bit because the whole, I can't remember what team it was, but they all sang to Billy Gilmore, yeah. Chelsea rent boy, and it was a whole away section, you know, so that's thousands of people singing that, and they were, they were probably doing it as a joke as well, because they see that as a joke, but they don't realise the effects that it can have on people. Yeah, and Megan, how do, you, how do we stop that happening? From, from your point of view, from the culture you're in, because I said before, I've got young daughters who love playing football, but I also know I've worked with sort of elder girls who are sort of 16, 17 and looking to go into senior women's football and they've pulled away from the game because of the, they, they feel as if there's like a, you know, a, a lesbian culture within, within women's football. Yeah, I think that's where women's football's changed a lot. It used to be quite a perception that, you know, you're, only, you're, you're gay or you're gay lesbian if you play women's football. And I think that perception's changed over time. Um, I think that's role models in the women's game. But... I think it's calling them out, like, you know, in the change room, if someone says out of order, it's up to, you know, our senior players to kind of back them up in standing up for someone who might not be able to. And I work with a lot of um, younger girls as well, um, playing football and just educating them, making sure they're saying the right thing. And look, we can't always control what happens at home and what their family's views are and their grandparents, but it's trying to cut that out in a outside that this isn't right and then kind of then looking to make their own decisions because like I said a lot of it is generations from families and I mean grandparents I mean yeah my, they come from a very different generation. My, my dad's like, still the yeah. same now and it's like I, I yeah. wince when my dad says stuff every yeah. occasionally now but it's almost like it is a generational thing where you know I pull my dad up on it yeah. you know but that, that's the point isn't it do you, do you still that happen in the change rooms now you see people pulling up on yeah. the comments they make. Yeah definitely I think it's I think especially the young girls, if a senior girl is saying something a bit out of order, it's like, no, look, she's, she's under 18, like, just leave her. And I, it has taken time. Like, I remember when I was 16, starting to play senior women's football, and there were, like, 30-year-olds, quite proud, open. Um, and then you had those who were from a different kind of um, background, and it, it was quite daunting at 16, because I was like, oh, my God, like, they're kind of just throwing away these comments like that. So, yeah, it's changed a lot in in terms of the change room, um, because yeah, the, the, the more girls are educated and, and kind of know it's not, it's not okay. And Kenny, we saw about Jake Daniels coming out recently, 17-year-old, um, very brave of him to do so. There's clearly more gay men within the football environment, but yet more to come out. But do you think, I mean, I've often thought about this, to, to even get to that environment, like he has done at 17 and still be in the pro game, he's not fallen by the wayside. So amazing courage by him, doesn't it? Because I think there probably has been really good players who have been, been gay and in, involved in male football and have not made it through because of the abuse they would have got when they were younger. Yeah, and that's the thing when we speak about these comments getting made, there, you know, there could be a, a gay guy in the changing room and, and that's putting him further back in terms of coming out and expressing himself and, and being himself, really. Because could, could the game be missing out then, essentially? Because there's not so many lads who want to get involved in it because they're worried about the culture within it. I don't, I don't think that's, that's a doubt. Um, when, when Jake Daniels came out and he spoke about you know, not being himself and, and lying to himself and everybody, everybody around himself. He, he knew he was gay from six years old and he says he would have come out before now if he wasn't in football. So football's obviously behind in terms of like this because it's affecting him coming out and it's, it's putting him under more pressure because maybe he hears these terms and 
He's taking him personally, so it's stopping him coming out. So maybe there's more out there. Well, I'm, I've got no doubt there will be more out there mm. that just don't want to do it and don't want to take that step because you need so much courage to do it. But he says even more so in this environment, it's, it's struggled with it. Do you, sorry, I was just take it. Do you think there's pressure on players not to? Yeah, I, I think there is. Yeah, I think there's. I, I think there's players that clearly in, who are in the game now who are who are gay but haven't come out because they for the fear of, of being judged within the changing rooms, and that's that's the biggest fear I think from the players' point of view is being judged by your peers, isn't it? You can actually deal with the stuff that goes on around you because you learn to do that as a footballer as you grow up anyway. But it's your peers, I think, what you want to be judged by, that are going to look at you a bit differently. Or the manager may not want to pick you because you know he's worried you're not going to be tough enough to stand up to the task. I think, and I, I would hope that. The, the support that Jake Daniels has got and, and the way everybody's, you know, open to, you know, is his life, that's how he feels and he's happy within himself with now, so I'm sure everybody accepts that and hopefully people see the reaction that he's got and it makes them more comfortable to do it. Yeah, and Megan, how proud are you of this football club? Because we're doing things like this today, you know, sort of changing discrimination and, and trying to change people's opinions. This club's always been kind of at the forefront of, of putting themselves out there to support the community and in a home for everyone. Yeah, I think that's what makes this club so special in home. I think that's why, for me, I'm so proud to be from Norwich and be part of this football club because they do, they push out, you know, things like this and support people, make it so inclusive and a community for everyone. And I, in my opinion, I don't see many clubs that do as much as we do. And I think sometimes others don't see that side as much. And I think... Yeah, I think that's what makes Norwich so special and, and that's why I'm so proud to call it my home. And, and is that the same perception from outside as well, Tim, from, from a fan's point of view? Is it, do you feel that way about your football club? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've been coming here 30 years. I'll come here to my dying day. It's, it's not going to change. But I think it's important that the club still looks forward and still looks to change and improve where it can. And this is just one area that it's doing and I'm very proud to be a part of that. Yeah, and again, Kenny, you know, you've been here for a few years now. You see the culture of this football club. It's very different to some others, isn't it? It is. And this is just one instance where, it, you know, I'm sure it will be a lot worse at other clubs than it is here because this is such a, you know, family community and everybody respects each other, well, to a certain extent, because there's obviously still some stuff happening that it's not great, but, you know, promoting stuff like this, hopefully, you know, people can stand up and, and have a wee look at maybe what they're saying on a Saturday at games or, you know, round about the city. Yeah, you can only change what's around you, can't you? Your own environment. And we're here today to change what's on that wall and we're going to do that by covering it up with a load of paint. So we're going to lob some paint, uh, some paint balloons at this and, and destroy these words. They will still be there, but they'll be covered up by a mural later on as well. Thank you.